Hi everyone, welcome to Zainer's Neat PG Information Series. All India Round One allotments have been published. Congrats to all those who have been allotted, and our best to all those who are waiting for allotments or waiting for upgradations and sub subsequent rounds. Uh, if you've been allotted, you would have started making preparation for All India Round One joining, attending state R1, taking decisions on how to manage All India Round One uh, joining and state counselings in tandem. And most importantly, there would have been a lot of queries on rules, the impact of joining a seat, uh, not joining a seat, eligibility for further state rounds and all India rounds, and taking decisions based on uh, the right information. So uh, in this video, uh, part one, we would uh, share with you the basic rules that will help you uh, give uh, help you with a lot of clarity on uh, decisions. In the second part, we will also have a look at every scenario that one can come across then looking at the All India Round 1 and State Round 1 counselling uh, in tandem. And this would be specific to all Round 1 decisions, All India Round 1 and State Round 1 decisions. We'll stop at that and we'll not get into All India Round 2 uh, since it will create a lot of confusion. Uh, second part of the video will have multiple scenarios of and of which only one or two max would be relevant for you. So just look, one, look at only those scenarios which are relevant for you so that there is no confusion. That is more than enough. So the timestamps in the description will have every scenario listed and just click on those scenarios that are relevant in the second part of the video. And you go to that, those scenarios directly and see what is uh, relevant, the rules and the impact in that scenario for taking decisions. We will post a separate video on do's and don'ts for joining since it is only relevant for those who finally decide to join the seats. Uh, we will, uh, also, we also have a lot of queries on fresh choice filling and eligibility for mop up and uh, uh, stray vacancy rounds. We have already addressed these queries through other videos. The description for uh, the description has the links for these videos. Please go through them, especially on fresh choice filling. We have provided complete clarity on uh, the confusion that exists uh, between all India round one choices and all India round two choices. Uh, this video would be a long one. It takes some time, but we'll assure you that at by the end of the video. You will have complete clarity on your decisions, the rules, and the impacts. Uh, the first part of the video, we go through the first part of the video and only the scenarios in the second part of the video, emphasizing because don't get uh, so that you don't get confused with those scenarios which are not at all relevant for you. The first part of the video, uh, we'll go through the basic rules that help in all India round one decisions. Uh, one, uh, we have taken these rules completely based on the MCC information bulletin and our experience and information that has been shared by candidates in the past. Uh, this is completely verified. One, uh, all qualified candidates can attend All India Round 2 irrespective of their All India or state st status. So whether you were allotted in All India, allotted, uh, not allotted in All India, you were allotted, you joined, you allotted, you joined and continued, allotted, you joined and continued uh, or resigned, that doesn't matter. Whether you hold a state R1 st seat, doesn't matter you are eligible for All India Round 2, except for one set, which is those who join All India Round 1 and do not offer upgradation. If they don't offer upgradation and continue and come into All India Round 2, they will not be able to fill choices. They won't even be able to log in and change their seat. So this is done usually only by those candidates who are absolutely sure about the seat that they want, usually, which is the first preference seat, if it is not a first preference seat, always opt for upgradation. And do not do this because it is online reporting for such candidates who do not opt for upgradation. That may be a blunder. Second, fresh choice filling for all All India Round 2 candidates. So when you log in and fill choices for All India Round 2, irrespective of your status, whether you were allotted, not allotted, allotted and free exited, allotted and continued, you will be seeing a blank choice list, which means there will be no choices. This is for everyone. Everyone will have to start filling in each choice one by one in the order that they want again. Now your All India Round 1 choices will not matter. If your All India, if there was some choice which was below your All India Round 1 allotted choice, still you will be able to move it up or change that so that the order is completely different. Add a new choice, delete the choices, change the order. Everything is possible. All India round one choices do not matter. You can go ahead and fill the completely different choice list. 
we have a separate video on this on how to fill choices uh, and what are the possibilities and uh, clarifying all the doubts we have shared the link in the description you can go through that third there is no loss of security deposit the amount that you paid 10k 25k or 2, 2 lakhs to mcc this is between you and mcc will not be forfeited basis your all india round on decision irrespective of whatever decision you take whether you decide to avail free exit join and resign or you uh, were not allotted you continue you will not be able to lose your security deposit put it that way even if you wish to you cannot lose your security deposit the security deposit will be lost only if you don't join an all india round to allotted institute that is after all india round to start, starts after allotment results are published you take a decision not to join all india round to seat that is when your security deposit is forfeited by basis your all india r1 decisions it will not be forfeited you will enter all india round 2 with your security deposit intact irrespective of whatever you fourth there is no difference in rules between dnb aaq and deemed except for a few minor things which are which are not rules of counseling but a few minor things there, there are many who are claiming that there is difference in rules in terms of free exit security deposit for feature etc no as far as free exit is concerned, security deposit for future is con concerned, attending further state R1, AAR2, state R2 eligibility, upgradation and choice filling, etc. in AAR2 is concerned, there is no difference in eligibility, uh, difference in rules between DNB, AAQ, and DP. Where are the differences? One, in terms of fee payment, if you are joining an All India Round 1 Institute, if you have been allotted a DNB seat, you will have to make the fee payment to NBE directly and the refund if any if you get upgraded later etc will be done by NBE to you in MDMS seats the individual would pay the candidate would pay the fee to the institute whereas in DNB you would pay the fee to NBE it is in fee payment that there is a difference second course commencement the Feb 1 rule does not apply for Feb 1 course commencement rule by NMC does not apply for DNB. NBE directs DNB and not NMC. So they can commence their course later too. And they may be a little more flexible when it comes to candidates who want to upgrade in uh, round two and want to join, uh, want to commence course a little later, etc. Deemed offline stray round at institute happens for deemed. So after mop up, the seats are reverted back to deemed institutes. And these seats. The counseling for these seats are conducted by deemed institutes at their institute. Whereas for DNB or AAQ, this counseling is conducted by MCC and it is an online draw. These are the only three differences. Otherwise, all rules remain the same, including All India Round 2 joint candidates are not eligible for any other counseling that is applicable for DNB, AAQ, and deemed. Every rule remains the same except for these differences. Finally, this is something that many have uh, confusion on. Uh, with, uh, the question is, after All India Round 1 allotment, if I don't join an avail free exit, or if I join and resign that seat, will it affect my mop-up eligibility? It will not affect your All India mop-up eligibility. There is question 58 which has created this confusion, question 58 of the information bulletin. Look at question 59. It is very clear. Who are ineligible is very clear. There's always been this clause of 58 and still all those candidates uh, who have been allotted in All India Round 1 and availed free exit and did not join their All India Round 2 seats were somehow eligible for All India mop-up either through same registration or repayment of registration fee if there had been a security deposit. So your All India Round 1 decisions will not affect your All India mop-up eligibility. It will be those decisions that you take post All India Round 1 that will make a difference. So now we look at all the R1 allotment scenarios and the decisions that are uh, uh, that can be taken and the impact of those decisions when it comes to All India Round 1 allotment. Okay, so we will look at the first scenario, which is a candidate who has not been allotted in All India Round 1. Obviously, there is no choice to make as far as All India is concerned. The candidate can attend state R1. You can attend All India Round 2. If you are allotted a state R1 seat and you join that seat, still you can attend All India Round 2. 
you can attend all india round 2 with the same registration as all india round 1 you don't need to re register again this is pretty obvious eligibility for all india round 2 you are eligible for all india round 2 you will use the same registration as all india round 1 choices for all india round 2 everyone has fresh choices pretty clear we look at scenario 2 which is an all india round 1 allotted candidate and the candidate has been allotted his or her top preference and the candidate is willing to join the all india round 1 seat obviously because it is the top preference and is not opting for upgradation again this is only done by candidates who have their top preference and do not want to do not have any other seat which is better than their all india round 1 allotted seat many candidates are asking that they want to avail this option of not opting for upgradation because they don't want to travel please don't do that you may have issues later in all india round 2 we will come to those options uh, uh, to those scenarios where uh, there will be an issue if you choose not uh, to not to opt for upgradation we would assume that that is your top preference and you don't have a better seat from need this can be done online or it can be physical too in most cases other than dnb your course will still commence on feb 1st most uh, institutes would commence course on feb 1st especially the state government institutes and in that case you will have to anyways report to duty on uh, feb 1st if you're even if you are done an online uh, joining resignation before feb 3rd after not opting for upgradation please check with mcc if it is not allowed system whether system allows or not we are not sure but if it is not allowed, this is your final seat because you will not be able to go into All India Round 2. There will be no further All India Round 2 rounds, uh, under Round 2 or any other round. So check with MCC, not with the Institute. Institute may also not have clarity. They may not have come up across with, with such a situation where a candidate took a decision to uh, not opt for upgradation and then later change their mind. So that is why we always suggest opt for upgradation so that there is no confusion. Eligibility for All India Round 2, not eligible. If you don't opt for upgradation, registration for All India Round 2, it is not relevant because you will not be able to log into choices for All India Round 2. It is not possible to fill in choices. Your All India Round 1 site is your final seat after you get into All India Round 2. And uh, check again on whether you will be able to resign your seat before Feb 3rd. After Feb 3rd, you are absolutely sure there is no resignation possible of your All India Round 1 seat and you that is your final seat. All, we, we, look, we look at scenario 3. All India round one allotted candidate made a mistake in choosing that particular seat. And now the candidate is not willing to join the All India round one seat. In this scenario, the candidate is very clear that he, he or she doesn't want the All India round one seat and so wants to avail free exit. So this is a free exit. How do you avail free exit? It is by doing nothing. Don't do anything. Do not mail the institute. Do not call the institute. Do not. You don't need to log into MCC or submit anything. That is free exit. You mail the institute. That will create confusion. You call them up and say, "I want to join. I have the seat, etc." It will create confusion. Don't do anything till All India Round Two starts. That would be free free exit. You can attend State Round One. You can attend State All India Round Two, holding your State Round One seat. And when you attend All India Round Two. You can do that with the same registration as All India Round 1. This does not affect All India mop-up eligibility. If you're eligible for All India Round 2, registration is same as All India Round 1. Choices will be fresh, like we have already mentioned. Everyone has fresh choice to, choices to be filled. What does be the impact? Uh, so many ask, uh, will there be an impact uh, in uh, filling in my All India Round 1 allotted seat? No, your All India Round 1 allotted seat can be filled in All India Round 2. What is the risk? There will be a minor risk of someone else above you opting for your All India Round 1 choice in All India Round 2. So in case someone above you, either a new registered person or a person who wants to change their choices, fills in the seat and gets that seat, then you will lose your All India Round 1 seat. That is the only risk. We look at scenario 4 where a candidate is allotted in All India Round 1 and the state Round 1 results are published before Jan 28th, which is a deadline for All India Round 1 joining. And the candidate is allotted a better state R1 seat. 
Pondicherry has already released uh, their allotment on Jan 22nd. So let's say this candidate has an All India Round 1 allotted seat and has a better seat in the state, let's say Pondicherry. Now, what will the candidate do? It is very obvious. The candidate will join state R1 seat directly because it is a better seat. And what will be the impact? The candidate would not join the All India Round 1 seat and therefore it will automatically become free exit. There's nothing that needs to be done to avail free exit. You don't need to mail the institute. You don't need to call the institute. You don't need to log into MCC or submit anything. If you do anything, that will cause confusion in All India Round 1. So just don't do anything and just go and join the state round one seat. You can attend All India Round 2 holding the state round one seat. You can attend All India Round 2 the same registration. And because you joined the state round one seat or you did not join the allotted All India Round 1 allotted seat, your AA mop of eligibility will not change. Again, eligible for AA Round 2, same registration as All India Round 1. Choices are fresh choices for All India Round 2 for everyone. Now, what will be the impact? Uh, many, uh, many have asked about the impact of whether they will be able to fill the All India Round 1 allotted and not join seat. Yes, the All India Round 1 allotted seat can be filled in All India Round 2. There is no issue. You will see that seat. You can fill in at any order that you want. What will be a minor risk? Someone else above you, a new registered person, newly registered person, or a candidate who already uh, who wants to shuffle their orders may opt for your All India Round 1 choice and they may be allotted. This minor risk exists though. Now we'll look at the next scenario where a candidate uh, has been allotted an All India Round 1 seat and the state round one results have been declared before Jan 28, well before Jan 28, so that they, uh, I mean, not on the same day, but well before. And the candidate did not get a better seat. So the candidate has an All India Round 1 allotted seat alone, which is the best seat that the candidate has. Now, the candidate has two options. One, the candidate can join the All India Round 1 seat and opt for upgradation. Now, in which case, the candidate will physically report Submit originals at the All India Round 1 Institute and the candidate can attend All India Round 2 with the same registration. Eligibility, the candidate is eligible for All India Round 2. Registration is the same as All India Round 1. Choice 1 will be fresh choices. But here there is a catch. If the candidate does not get upgraded in All India Round 2, since the candidate is holding an All India Round 1 seat, the All India Round 1 seat will be the final seat for the candidates. That will be your final seat. So. Uh, be very clear about this part. In case you don't want that to be your final seat, then that comes scenario 5B. We look at scenario 5B where a candidate has been allotted an All India Round 1 seat. The state Round 1 results have come before Jan 28, well before Jan 28, and the candidate did not get a better seat. Now the candidate thinks, okay, if I take this All India Round 1 seat, I may not be upgraded and finally may end up at a seat that uh, an All India Round 1 seat, which I will be forced to take because there is no resignation for a possibility in All India Round 2 for an unupgraded All India Round 1 seat. So the candidate decides not to join the All India Round 1 seat. The candidate doesn't want to risk an unupgraded seat. The candidate can free exit the All India Round 1 seat. The candidate did not do anything. You don't need to mail the institute. You don't need to call the institute. You don't need to log into MCC or submit anything. Again, only if you do any of these, then there will be confusion and therefore we exit in All India Round 1. So don't do anything. You can attend All India Round 2 with the same registration and this free exit does not affect your mop-up eligibility. But note here, you can take another call. Your state R1 results have been published and it is not a better seat than your All India Round 1 seat. You are not joining the All India Round 1 seat because you don't want to risk an unupgraded seat. But you can continue to join, you can go ahead and join your state R1 seat and hold it and then move on to All India Round 2 without an All India Round 1 seat. Be very clear. In this situation, you can hold an All in, uh, a state Round 1 seat and skip joining the All India Round 1 seat and move on to All India Round 2 holding a state R1 seat. That is possible. 
and eligibility for all india round 2 irrespective of whether you hold a state r1 seat or not you will be eligible registration same registration as uh, all india round 2 no need to re register choices for all india round 2 fresh choices the question again is whether your all india round 1 allotted seat can be filled in all india round 2 you can fill it and if you fill it that will be a fresh all india round 2 allotment which you can decide on at a later point in time so but there is a minor risk if someone else above you opts for the seat a new uh, fresh registered person or a person who wants to change their choices uh, order of choices and puts in all india your all india round on allotment choice at a higher a higher order in that case you may have a risk of losing your all india round seat Uh, now we'll look at some of the the uh, complicated ones, uh, which I think many of uh, a, a few states uh, state candidates may uh, come into. Uh, now this is a scenario where uh, a person is a candidate is allotted an All India Round One seat, and the state Round One results are declared after Jan twenty eighth. Jan twenty eighth is the deadline for joining your All India Round One seat. And your state results will only come after Jan 28th. You know that. But you know that it comes before Feb 3rd, which is the date of resignation of a joined All India Round 1 seat. You have two options here too. One, you can join the All India Round 1 seat before Jan 28th. Go ahead and join. Your state Round 1 results will definitely, you know that it will not come before Jan 28th. So you safely go join your All India Round 1 seat. You opt for upgradation and wait for your state Round 1 results. When will they come? The state round one results will come in between Jan 28th and Feb 3rd. That is the scenario. And in that case, you would have already physically reported, submitted originals or all India round one seat before Jan 28th. In case it is online counseling for state, it is not an issue. If it is an offline counseling, you get a bona fide or an admission slip from round one institute and take it for the state counseling. You wait for state round one results before Feb 3rd. If you get a better state, Better than All India Round 1 seat in state round 1. Your, your state round 1 seat is better than your All India Round 1 seat. Then go to AAR1 Institute, resign AAR1 seat, get relieving letter, original documents, and submit them and join the state R1 Institute. So this is very clear. You can join All India R1 before Jan 28th, opt for upgradation. And after state R1 results, which come between Jan 28th and Feb 3rd, Decide on joining the state R1 seat, resign the All India R1 seat, and join the state R1 seat. That is possible before Feb 3rd, if your state R1 results come before Feb 3rd. In this situation, you can you will be holding a state R1 seat, and you can attend All India R2 with a state R1 seat. You can attend All India Round 2 with the same registration, and this does not affect mop up eligibility at all. Now, eligibility for AAR2, like we said, it, you are eligible. Same registration as AAR1, same choices, uh, fresh choices for All India Round 2. There'll be a blank choice list and you'll fill every choice again, uh, every choice right from uh, the first choice again in All India Round. So now what if I wait for state R1 results and a better seat is not allotted? You have a, your All, All India Round 1 seat is a better seat now and your state R1 results Gives uh, gives you a, a lower than all India lower preference than all India round one seat. What in that case? You have two options. You continue with the all India round one joint seat and attend all India round two. If this is the same as scenario five A, you can go back to five A. The impact is the same. If you continue with your all India round one joint seat and attend all India round two after February third, it means if you don't get upgraded, you will end up with your all India round one seat. But you can do that. The second option is you don't want to get into that uh, unupgraded All India Round 1 seat uh, lock. In that case, you resign your All India Round 1 seat before Feb 3rd anyways and attend All India Round 2. This is a free exit, same impact as Scenario 5B. In this case, you can still go ahead and join your lower preferred state R1 seat, which you can have as a backup in case you don't get your All India Round a better all India round seat. That is always possible. Uh, in these two scenarios, I would ask you to look at uh, uh, scenario 5A and scenario 5B for more clarification.
The next scenario is six uh, B. We are looking at a candidate where uh, who has allotted an All India Round One seat. The state Round One results are after Jan twenty eighth. Jan twenty eighth is the last date for uh, uh, joining All India Round One seat. But you know that for sure your state Round One results will not come before Jan twenty eighth. But they may come before Feb third. That is something that your schedule uh, state Round One schedule says. So in that case. In the earlier scenario, we said, what if you are not going to, if you are decide to join the All India Round 1 seat, what is it uh, before Jan 28th, what will be the impact? Here, you decide not to join the All India Round 1 seat. Why? You decide, okay, anyways, I don't want to risk an unupgraded All, All India Round 1 seat. I will go with the state R1 seat. That has been decided even before Jan 28th. So, you skip the All India Round 1 seat. This is usually done only when the All India Round 1 seat is not a good seat. If it is a very good seat, usually candidates don't do this and they wait for state R1 allotment, which will happen after Jan 28th. Before that, they would go join the All India Round 1 seat. But in certain cases where you are very clear that you don't want to take that All India Round 1 seat, you need not join before Jan 28th. In that case, you avail free exit. What is free exit of your All India Round 1 seat? You don't mail the, just don't do anything for free, uh, availing free exit. Don't mail the institute. Don't call the institute. You don't need to log into MCC or submit anything uh, or uh, submit any option, etc. Only if you do any of this, then it will create a confusion. Free exit can be availed by just not doing anything till All India Round 2 starts. And we, you wait for state round 1 results and you already lost your opportunity to join the All India Round 1 seat. So you wait for state round 1 results and if allotted, join the state R round one seat. If allotted any seat, you can decide on joining the state R1 seat. You can attend All India round two holding the state R1 seat. You are eligible. You can attend All India round two with the same registration and this does not affect All India mop up eligibility at all. Uh, you are eligible for All India round two. Same registration as All India round one. No need to re-register. Choices. You will. Everyone will have fresh choices for All India round two. So you will also have fresh choices. What is uh, will you be able to fill the All India Round 1 allotted seat in All India Round 2? Yes, you will be able to fill the All India Round 1 seat in All India Round 2. And in case it is allotted again to, you can take a choice. You will There will be no risk of, and uh, you will not fall under the All India Round 1 retain seat clause. This is a new seat that is being allotted. So you can fill that choice, but there is a minor risk of getting that seat. If someone else above you, basically a newly registered candidate, or a candidate who was already there in All India Round 1 who wants to shuffle their choices and put the All India your All India Round 1 allotment in the higher order, then you, there is a minor risk of losing your All India Round 1 allotment too in All India Round 2 and going to a uh, and ending up with a lower preferred allotment that exists. That risk exists, but it is your call. Uh, so we will look at the last scenario. Uh, this is a very complicated scenario and hope. No state uh, schedule is uh, uh, made so that a candidate comes to this uh, this particular scenario. Uh, this is a scenario where you are allotted an All India Round One seat, and you know that your state Round One is not happening. It the results will be after Feb third. I don't know when it will start. When the state Round Three uh, Round One results will come in, and maybe I am also sure that it will be after Feb three because of some court court case or legal issues or state delaying it or publishing a schedule which has results after Feb 3 for whatever reasons. They should not do it legally, but for whatever reasons. Now, what is the option that you have? You join AAR1 seat because you don't know about your state results and you wait for state R1 results or the schedule. Till when? Till Feb 3, you will wait for state R1 results or any change in schedule of state or you will keep looking at an extension of the Feb 3 deadline, Feb 3rd deadline by MCC. You will see whether MCC extends the deadline. Till Feb 2, if you have no notification, then it means that MCC may not uh, uh, change the deadline. There is a risk and you take a decision before Feb 3rd on whether you want to continue with your All India Round 1 seat or resign All India Round uh, 1 seat at that stage. This is a decision that needs to be taken. There are only two options that you have. If you resign your All India Round 1 seat before the deadline, that is Feb 3rd. Or if you end up not joining because all this confusion in come in and you know that 
it goes it, the state results will go before, after feb 3 i don't even want to join etc in that case whenever the state round one happens you can join the state round one seat because you are not cold, holding an all india round one seat your documents are with you but this carries a minor risk and losing of losing an available all india round one seat you had an all india round one seat which may have been a good seat which you are risking expecting something in state r1 but this has to happen if you have to take a state r1 seat which for which the results come after feb 3rd the other option that you have is to continue with your all india round one seat assuming that your state seat may not be good or maybe take a risk if you do that then if your state r1 results come after feb 3rd before all india round 2 uh, results etc no if your state r1 results come after feb 3rd then you will not be able to resign your all india round one seat that is not possible during the period institute should have been clearly in intimated uh, that they will not allow any resignation of an all india round one joint seat joint and continued seat after feb so in that case you will have, you will lose the option of joining your state round one seat if you continue with an all india round one seat if your state round one results come after feb but in any case irrespective of whatever happens you can attend all india round 2 with the same registration of the same registration irrespective of whatever scenario you fall under your decisions here will not impact your mop up eligibility if you intend to go to mop up your eligibility for all india round 2 you are eligible registration for all india round 2 same registration you will fill such choices like anyone else okay so here the, we have a specific scenario where if you resigned or did not join the all india round to fund on round one seat many queries are there on whether you will be able to fill the all india round one allotted seat yes you can fill the all india round one allotted seat in all india round two there is a minor risk of someone else above you opting for that it may be a newly registered candidate or it may be a candidate who changes their choices uh, putting in all india your all india round one allotted seat at a higher order and if that higher ranker candidate does that then you may have a minor risk of losing your all india round one allotted seat so this is the only thing this is a very very uh, uh, difficult scenario to be in but you have to make a choice at around this feb second third timeline if your state r1 results are delayed so so finally we come to what status you will be in after your decisions on the all india round one seat so you can be only in one of these statuses so depending upon each status we will also look at what will be the impact and what will be uh, the uh, actual what is the impact of the decision made and what will be the minor uh, risk that you carry one you are not allotted an all india round one seat you are you have been allotted and you did not join that all india round one seat this is free exit you were allotted you joined and resigned the seat before feb 3rd all three are the same it is as good as uh, the two scenarios of free exit are as good as an not allotted all india round one seat there is nothing that needs to be done you will have to wait for all india round two you may attend state around uh, may have attended state round one in the meantime you may or may not hold an a state round one seat and you can go ahead and attend all india round to irrespective of whether you are holding a state round one seat or not you will not be holding holding an all india uh, round one seat in this case now uh, the second scenario you were allotted you did not opt for upgradation this is only done by candidates who think that that is their final seat and they were absolutely sure of the course uh, of the seat and then uh, they are absolutely sure that they won't change their mind after going to the institute this can be done online or physically at institute but post commencement post commencement would be most likely first irrespective of whether you join online or physically report usually state md state government medical colleges start course on feb 1st it may be, depend on state but most states would start on feb 1st and you will have to report you can check it at the institute when you do an online reporting if it is going to be uh, feb 1st you can probably opt for physical reporting towards 27th or 28th another major thing that you need to check here is if you do not opt for upgradation whether resignation will be allowed if at all you want to change your mind before feb 3rd if it is not allowed 
that means once you don't offer upgradation that is your final seat out of nipg 2021 we always suggest you offer upgradation and keep options open don't even need to get into this confusion if you offer upgradation and still don't want to change to any other college or upgrade to any other college you just don't need to fill choices in all india round 2 that is it you will retain your seat so always offer upgradation don't take this choice because it is there is an option of online reporting if you don't offer upgradation that is a blunder to make the last the last status that you can be in is you have you have been allotted an all india round 1 seat you opted for upgradation and continued beyond fifth third so you have to report physically at this inst at institute for this there may be some institutes which are lenient very if you if you have uh, especially if you have uh, been affected because of covid unfortunately in that case the institutes will be lenient uh, you can talk to mcc and get an online reporting and opt for upgradation but it will be a, it should it will be very very rare cases where uh, mcc allows this after looking at all the documents etc check with the institute otherwise you report physically if you want to opt for upgradation when you join at the institute when you report and join during admission formalities ensure that you tell them to say yes for opt for upgradation they will enter your details in the mcc portal when they enter they will have to ensure that you opt for upgradation you uh, ensure that they select yes against your name when in the column against opt for upgradation in your admission letter it will say opt for upgradation yes that is confirmation that you have opted for upgradation you can attend state r1 many are saying if you opt for upgradation you cannot attend state r1 state r1 eligibility does not depend upon your all india r1 status you can attend state r1 only thing is if your state r1 is a physical counseling you or an offline counseling basically you have to get a bona fide or a, the admission slip has to be carried to your state r1 physical counseling you can attend all india r2 holding an all india r1 seat the course commencement can be m feb first for md ms or diplomas diplomas in medical colleges Uh, except for dnb mostly the course commencement can be fed first you can check with the institute while you report the only uh, the only major impact that you need to know in this scenario is that if you are not upgraded in all upgraded in all india r2 all india r1 seat is the final seat most get upgraded but still uh, there are a lot of candidates who don't get upgraded who had an option earlier to resign the seat that doesn't exist now if you don't get upgraded and Uh, if you had continued with your all india round one seat beyond feb third and you don't get upgraded then that is your final seat so hope this entire video has provided some clarity i wish that you i, I only hope that you only looked at the scenarios that are uh, relevant for you otherwise it would have definitely created confusion uh, and i uh, hope this has been helpful for you uh, and uh, helps you in taking the right decisions we uh, also have uh, uh, the links on do's and don'ts for all india round on joining especially on fresh choice filling in all india round to cl clarifying uh, that it is absolutely fresh choice filling for everyone and you can move any choices anywhere and the eligibility for mock up and stay these links are available in the description have a look at them uh, you can also look at the other videos that we have put in how on how to use zynerd's tool for neat pg uh, for choice filling uh, especially during all india round 2 when you are making choices and making taking decisions you will have complete information on all round closing ranks and zynerd and uh, it is available now uh, for a few days at a discounted price you can have a look at those uh, uh, videos and then take a decision on uh, registering for zynerd and subscribing with us thank you and hope it was uh, useful